Hello and welcome to Cloud Force Vibes. My name is Bobby and this is how I grow orchids and carnivorous plants. Cloud Force Fives. So today we're going to do a little table talk. This is my Bulbophyllum Maximum. This is my largest Bulbophyllum and as you can see it's definitely large and in charge. I've had this plant almost two years and it has definitely doubled in size since I got it. The original cluster of this plant is just this middle section right here. Last year it grew in all directions here, 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 here and it literally just started to spread and sprawl just like a lot of Bulbophyllums do. So what I had done when I originally mounted this plant was I put it on a pretty large piece of cork. This piece I figured would be adequate for it to climb and clamber on for several years until I can either get a bigger one or figure out what to do with this plant. So this year's new growths, most of them are coming out okay. Um, we had this one do us a favor and cut hard left and it's putting roots down in the moss and going to grow up in a nice direction on the mound. I've got two growths here that are also doing the same thing. They're growing straight up the mound. They're going to put their roots right down on it and not be a problem. This one here is off the mound, but it's not quite long enough yet for me to feel comfortable enough to do too much with it. So we're going to let it go for now. We might put a little bit of moss under it and let it just cling and go that way because I think ultimately we'll curve it around and bring it across the mount this way so it can start growing back up in the right direction. That leaves us with a few growths over here. This one's growing off the mount already so we're going to coax this one back in and get it tied back on so it grows up and over across the bark and there's one behind it last year that formed that actually kind of grew to this bulb that we're going to peel back and we're going to give it a better position higher up on the cork and let it do its thing so it can grow vertically and this plant will stay contained to this piece of bark. So that's the topic of my video today. Just a quick look at my Bulbophyllum Maximum and I'm going to show you guys how to go ahead and tame a really unruly large Bulbophyllum onto a somewhat reasonably sized and um, easy to handle mount. First things first, the absolute most important thing that you're going to need to do this is some fishing line. There's all kinds of different ones out there. I actually happen to be a fisherman as well, so I keep multiple kinds around at all times. But I use fluorocarbon fishing line. It's very thin, it's very clear, and it really does, I find, blend into the mount a whole lot easier and better than some of your other fishing lines. It also doesn't have as much stretch. So there's nothing more annoying than using monofilament line, which has a whole bunch of stretch. I feel like I'm talking about fishing right now. <laughs> Um, that has a whole bunch of stretch and over time your orchid weighs in and stretches it and stretches it and stretches it and it's soggy and you know sloppy and falling off. So fluorocarbon line in my opinion even though it's a little bit more expensive it's a lot stronger it's a lot thinner and it's a lot more translucent than regular fishing line and I find it way easier and way better to tie orchids on to mounts with. So first things first we're gonna get a healthy section of this. That should be enough. I don't have anything to cut it with. I'll be back. Gotta have something to cut it with. Alright. So we've got a nice section of line. I tie a surgeon's loop, so you're probably going to have a very hard time seeing this, but I'm going to do my best. So you take your knot, all you do is make a loop, I like to leave you know, a good three, four, five inches, make a little loop, and then just tie the loop around itself. That's it, just like that, and then you have a tag end right there. Then I take the tag end and the tying around part, and I put it through the loop, just like that, and I make a little lasso basically. So from that point you slip the lasso right over top of 
your cork bark wherever you choose to do it and then the most important part is you want to make sure that little lasso part in your knot ends up on the back of the mount just like that I've, I know you guys most of you probably watch Rogers Orchids and he has a slightly different method but it ends up being the exact same um, result I guess the exact same result so here you have your loop that you have pulled against to pull back around and that point creates a little notch for you to slip your tying ends back through and give you something to tie off on once the time comes. I will show you that here in just a few. So first things first I'm gonna do one loop around to make sure I keep some good tension on this thing without cutting too hard into my orchid with the first wrap. We're going to try to take this lead right here and we're going to gently, gently, gently push it over, get it off of that pseudo bulb over there. And we're going to go ahead and put our first loop right around the base of that guy. to our starting side. Now it's going to look a little funny because this growth now lays over but I'm not too concerned about that. It will right itself, the, the leaf will adjust itself to catch the light better over time and it will look a little bit more natural. So this guy, easy peasy, we're just going to tuck him in a little bit gently. Just get him onto that cork And we're going to come around it with our line gently. The new growths are soft. You do not want to crank down on them too hard. You will cut right through them with fishing line. I lost it. <coughs> now, that's not going to be the only wrap because it was a pretty gentle wrap. I would like to go around this part of the bulb and really suck this guy over a little bit more. So we'll come around one more time through this existing foliage down around the base of that older pseudobulb that has a woodier rhizome and it's going to be able to take a little bit stronger of a coaxing, if you will, with this fishing line. Just like that. Now, let's stand it up, check it out. So we've got this growth tucked in just a little bit better. This growth is now touching the cork and it's going to continue to progress up. Its roots will cling on, they might go around the back, they may come this way, but now at least I know they're going to be on the cork. And this growth as well is nice and tucked firm with its new lead going straight up the bark, which at some point in time, once it gets a little bit longer, I may put another wrap around and suck that guy in, but right now I don't want to do that. It's too short, it's too soft, and I do not want to risk breaking it off. So, let's see. We're happy with that right now. I'm going to go ahead and sit something on this to keep my tension. Nothing better than some supplements. We're going to take just a little bit of moss and we're going to add it down here into this corner before we do another set of wraps. So this is zombie moss. It's dry as a bone. I do not mind. We're just going to go ahead and we're going to tuck just a little bit of it up on the bottom of this mount right there to give these new growth down here is something to put some more roots down into because there is a substantial air gap between the rhizome and the mount and I don't want them to dry out. Alright. So, we've got our 
line. We're going to do a hard cut down. Just like that. We're going to go ahead and do one wrap around this moss here at the top side of it. And we're going to go ahead and do one more. Oop, I kicked the tripod. Sorry about that, guys. One more wrap around the bottom side of it. Just to make sure it's nice and secure. Not falling off there and looking sloppy. We don't like that. One more, why not? So from this point, I think we're done. We're going to take our tying end. We're going to cut it off just a little bit shorter because it's hard to manage right now. And we are going to work on finding that loop. So we have our tag end here and on one side of that knot you're going to see two pieces come off. This is the tedious part guys but I promise you it's worth it. So I've got my loop. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my end, I'm just going to stick it through the loop. Well, um, apparently my video cut off guys before I got the knot all tied, so hopefully you saw most of that. All I did was go through and catch the loop, stick the end through and tie it off. Um, I'll have to show you guys that again I guess. but. This is the finished product. We have our Bulbafil and Maximum. It is ready for another season or two, hopefully. Um, we've got our moss tucked in here for these new guys to get their roots into. And both of these growths have been tamed up against that cork, ready to go ahead and grow on. I have not managed to, uh, to flower this guy yet. This is one of those weird African Bulbafilums that really needs a dry winter rest to be happy. So having that said, you can see all my pseudobulbs are really plump and really healthy. Um, I do have a black spot on one of the new leaves from last year but I'm pretty sure that was my carelessness with the sprayer and uh, yeah so hopefully this winter I'm gonna let this thing dry out really really dry let it desiccate quite a bit that's what I've read is really a good inducer for getting this thing to have a good blooming so I hope you guys enjoyed I have a couple more maintenance type videos like these I'm gonna do hopefully it helps you guys out and gives you guys some ideas on how to contain some of these bigger and harder to manage plants. So thanks again for joining in. I do appreciate it. I hope you guys are all staying safe out there. And until next time, happy growing.